Well, I wanted to make a uh, another video about the subject of uh, Japanese bosses. And uh, the reason that I wanted to do this was I was thinking, actually I was thinking a lot after I got a comment from uh, Vidbrats uh, regarding the uh, uh, rose-colored glasses that uh, uh, often uh, are on the eyes of foreigners in regards to the view of Japan in so far as not seeing the uh, the faults and uh, the folly that exists uh, in all human cultures in terms of how they choose to live their lives and how the society is set up and operates. And um, I wanted to say first of all to Vidbrats, I agree with you completely that uh, that fact is a uh, is, is something that's very curious um, and it seems to be exist very um, strongly in from from outsiders uh, as they view Japan, and I'm not sure why that is. I suspect it has something to do with the fact that uh, humans in general want to have a place in mind where uh, the problems that they know in their own world don't exist. And uh, for many, uh, Japan, uh, with its discipline, with its uh, traditions, with its uh, art and history and culture, and uh, the beauty of the landscape and everything, a whole package. Uh, fits the mold in terms of being a place like that and and people don't want to see the reality and um, I was thinking particularly about the one in the video that I made about Japanese bosses I used two terms that uh, uh, stood out that kind of came to me as, as I was making the video the one was the um, uh, the smiling executioner in describing uh, bosses from my own country from the United States that I knew when I was employed there and uh, that has a very negative connotation, of course. And then the other uh, generalization, the term that I used was um, um, uh, loving father, a very positive uh, image. And, uh, you know, it's hard to escape when you generalize. It's hard to escape, uh, you know, having a basket in all-encompassing uh, idea. And then, of course, no, nothing in life is like that. So, you know, you know it's, it's, it's a struggle to try to find words that can take in the broader scope without winding up with a, a gross generalization. And I'm afraid that I'm, I'm particularly unhappy, although both of those terms are, are, are quite extreme. One is very negative, one is very positive. And I, and I didn't intend that to be the case. I was just trying to throw light on both situations. The one that uh, I want to try to correct now, in uh, particularly, is the concept of the um, loving father. <clears throat> and I'm going to start by saying another, another generalization. Here I go, I'm going to get myself in trouble again. And that is, here's, here, here, here it is, how, how about this video, Bratz, vid Bratz. Um, the Japanese salarymen, I'm going to talk about Japanese uh, businessmen. Japanese salarymen are um, slaves to their jobs. There, I'm going to get in trouble for that. Um, but I do think that that, now I think I'm closer to the mark on that than in saying uh, the other things. And what I mean by that is, okay, the, the young man going to college, I'm speaking about men here, there are salary women. And the term salaryman, of course, is the term that used to describe uh, businessmen, you know, suit and tie guys that go to work every day and get a, a salary paycheck. There are salary women in Japan, but they're, in the, they're a minority, so I'm speaking to the salary men, because that's the ones that uh, really are affected here. The young man goes to college, graduates from college, goes to the recruitment uh, uh, events, gets picked up by a, a large company in Japan and begins working as a, as, as a freshman. That man basically is on a track in traditional Japan, in you know, modern, modern 20th, 20th and 21st century Japan. They're on a track course that will take them to age 60 when they will retire and, uh, and begin puttering around golf and doing art and the like. Okay? That's the way it works here. And for the most part, they can't leave that track without suffering serious consequences. Now, you will meet periodically a, a, a person in, in Japan, I've met a few of them, a man who was operating a little bakery somewhere, and he can tell you that before he was previously, uh, he worked for a corporation in Tokyo, and uh, the suit and tie deal, and got sick of it, and, and came away and did that. They, these guys are rare. You don't see them very much. For the most part, most Japanese salarymen bear it suffer through it. Hopefully they've got a good job and they like their job. Many of them do. But many of them, as Vidbrats uh, pointed out, do not like their job. They are they're very unhappy and uh, they don't have the options that uh, many uh, in, in other countries do of basically uh, uh, telling the boss, take this job and shove it and go off and find another job. The reason being, uh, other corporations frown on people that are, are, are uh, basically hopping uh, 
between jobs and the course of their career. Uh, there's a, you're climbing a ladder in a way, and if you leave the structure, the organization that you're in, to go to somewhere else, uh, they're gonna not gonna like that because you've basically you're you're, you're going off the track there, and there and you can't kind of slide in to the, the new corporation at the same level so easily as you can, for example, in the United States. So these guys don't have a lot of options. Maybe they can get transferred to a big corporation. Maybe they can get transferred to another department or another location. Uh, that may help. Um, but and here I go again. I'm getting extreme again. For many, the only way out is to simply, there's only two ways to, to deal with it uh, for most. And that is simply to, to bear it and uh, to, 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 to trudge on through uh, to retirement and see the way through. And that's what most of them do. Um, and for a, a, a very sad case of a minority, of, well, ob of obviously and of course, uh, some choose to actually end their lives. And this may um, uh, in explain the high suicide, in part, the high suicide rate in Japan. Many of the uh, suicides that happen in Japan are uh, businessmen, in fact, uh, often businesses that have failed to the like, but many of them are those who are trying to escape. So here we go. I've uh, I've I've taken that that idea of the uh, of the loving father and I've uh, I've which was kind of extreme and I've uh, shed uh, an image of of basically um, you know the salaryman is a slave with another extreme image why can't I get away from these extreme images somewhere between those two things is a more of a reality the reality that I the point that I wanted to make in the Japanese bosses video was that Japanese bosses do not typically wield the acts of termination, of, of, of losing your job, of firing you, the way that uh, Western bosses do. Instead, what they do is they use uh, discipline and, in many cases, shame to achieve uh, similar results, to, to achieve the result of getting uh, employees to work hard. The image of a benevolent father was one of where they, this is basically, they try to in create a kind of a family atmosphere where the boss is the head of the family and uh, he will, uh, it, try to look after you and in looking after you is trying to get you to be a good employee to get you to work hard and uh, just like a, a father in, in, in many families that may mean yelling at you once in a while that's really what it's about do you have you know ask you know, you know bad guys you mean guys mean bosses that don't really give a damn and really are mean and treat their employees they're bad yes you certainly do but that just is, is something separate from the image that I was trying to create of, of how it's different from uh, the Western situation so hopefully I've, uh, I've, I've given you some uh, uh, additional information that helps to uh, uh, detract from the generalization that I made, and uh, maybe that will uh, help a little bit. So that's it, signing off from the closet, and uh, I'm going to head out and join my family now. Take care. Bye-bye.